The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician's host and the author of the Tiger Tech, uh, the opening call. Whoops. <laughs> How many thousands of uh, editions have I got you? The opening call, my daily newsletter. And uh, we're looking at the two minute chart right now. It's up 475 in the E mini. And this is a two minute chart just starting a new leg C. Uh, we'll see what happens here. I'll just make it real clear. If there is a close on any 10-minute basis below 2908 this morning, uh, this well, it's now this afternoon because we're noon Eastern time, uh, between now and 1.30, that'll suggest the upside is very limited. And if there's a push above 20, we're at 29.13. If there's a push above 29.80, that holds for three 10 minute spans, that's 30 minutes. That'll be that'll allow for quite a nice close on the in the E-mini, which is lagging the Dow. So here we go. We're looking at uh, the dollar. Dollar is holding pretty nicely here. It's trying to form a little channel. Let me show you this bigger picture, the daily chart. You see this one, you see this cup formation. You've got a little bit of a, a sloping handle-ish, like a stick to the downside. This needs to see, the dollar needs to see 97.42 very soon. It's at 97.03, hopefully by tomorrow. And that'll mean that the dollar is going back and it'll test the 97.50 high. That was, was that 52? 97.52 high that was made on the 2nd of April. And start leg D, that'll be very positive for the daily, very positive for the weekly and extremely positive for the monthly because it begins leg C in April in the monthly chart. And he pulled back under 96.20, not good. All right, let's get to the nitty gritties here. The nitty gritty says that crude oil is holding pretty darn well. It's made a peak in the Chapman Wave methodology, holding the nine period green, nine period moving average in the rectangle formation I'd drawn a little while back and is te tested the 14 period Sorry, tested the 200-period moving average in the weekly charts, pulled back just a tad. Looks to me like the 65.80 to 66.30 area is going to be a key for crude oil because I think that should be a target uh, within the next week. And on the downside, 62 to 61.50 should be the initial support. If it goes under 61, that's going to say a bit of a timeout here in crude oil as well. The TLT, which is the Lehman 20-year Treasury bond fund, has made a lower low since it made that high of 126.69 on the 28th of March. This is the iShares 20-year Treasury bond ETF. Weekly chart made a peak D, so you can expect it, a peak D in the Chapman Wave, the fourth highest peak. That's where other things can happen. You can have a deeper pullback in time and price. We'll see what happens, but if it goes to the 120-130 area, 120.43 is a 200-period exponential moving average, and we'll see if that's going to be the case. Now, if bonds keep pulling back, yields go a little higher, that's going to suggest that the uh, stock market still has inner strength. Uh, rather than see money come out of bonds and going to stocks, um, you will see bonds suddenly rally above 124.30. If that happens in the TLT, money will go back into bonds and out of stocks. That's kind of my thinking here. So let's get back to our nitty gritties. We wanted to just briefly look at the high-grade copper. High-grade copper is just trading in the sideways range. We want to look at wheat, which is down. Wheat W. Uh-oh. Yep, there it is. It's down. Whoa, now it's down huge. Down 13 and a half at 446. Uh, that makes it important to look at the soybeans. Down 11, 11 at 887. Oh, let's look at corn. Corn. Corn is trading down four at 356 and three quarters. Um, yep, that's taking the um, the grains down 
this is going to be really important. Can the grains get out of this? Can they start to rally quite strongly? We're going to be watching very closely. Now, I just, I, I just wanted to show you in terms of techniques and, and, and stuff that you can look at that might be helpful. Look, in the, in the chart formation of the two-minute chart of the E-mini, it made a high at a peak D, the fourth highest peak. Remember, we were talking about that just a moment ago. It took a while to get there, but it got there. It made a high of 2921.0 for two two-minute bars, and ever since then, it's been pulling back. It made a low this morning so far of 29.10. It's trading at this point at 12.11 in the afternoon of 29.14. This is going to be very important because there's a lot that says to me, I, now I can I just show you the chart patterns that I think are very important. You see the sideways rectangle formation? The longer one stays, you see a chart stay in the rectangle formation. The greater chances are that if it takes out the low, it could have quite a deep uh, move to the downside because it's used up time, it's usurping energy. There's kind of a rotational aspect to it um, as money starts to go in and comes out, goes in, comes out with a mixed um, type of market. But let me show you something even I think is even more fascinating. When you're looking at the Dow on, the, on a chart basis, daily basis, you see this cup and handle right here, right here. So that is a cup. It breaks 26,241 by going to the high of 26,487. That's a significant move to the upside, 200, 240 points. And then it pulls back and it retests inside that. So this is not a cup and handle. Or it has the look of it. It has more than a Chapman wave cup and ladle that says if you break above the left side lip in a cup formation, especially after an H pattern, and you take out decisively immediately the left side high, in this case of 26.241, treat it as a chapter wave cup and ladle that should go to um, at least a D, but it can even go to an E. And then when it pulls back, it retests the breakout point, the left side lip, and then maybe some new pattern is forming. At this point, the pattern is really just a handle, a kind of large handle with rising highs. So this makes it very important because what it's saying is that the MACD is good, but it's really starting to fail in the sense that it's not showing st tremendous strength. Stochastic is still good. It's at 84%. But I'm looking at uh, the pattern itself, and the pattern says if within two sessions is a daily chart, you've got these two little doji candles. You've actually got almost like five dojis in a row. Uncertainty, even with the gap up, it says that there needs to be a spiral to the upside. In this case, I would put the spiral at 26,650s. It needs to just power right through there. And when it does that, that's a recycle, and we'll, we'll deal with it at that time. So, But I am looking at this, and I'm saying, you know, spectacular move, very quick peak B to a leg C. If there's any pullback in the next, by Friday at 4 o'clock, Oh, no, we're off Friday, Thursday at 4 o'clock. So we've got two days to go. If there is a pullback, any time we see the Dow get underneath the gap high of 26,309, in other words, if the, if the Dow is trading at 26,200s in the next couple of days, I suspect we've begun a consolidation phase. I'll be right back. Got a bunch of questions lined up. Um, Dow is up 63. S&P's lagging, but it's up 4.5. I'll be back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Uh, yeah, so let's get on. And I had a question about BIP, which is BIP, uh, infrastructure company. It is the, uh, what the heck is it called? Uh, Brookfield Infra Infrastructure Partners, LP. You know, I've never, I don't know if I've ever done this one before, unless it was by mistake. Made a peak D in the weekly, and I suspect it's just going to, I'm going to put my usual rectangle formation right there, rectang rectangle formation. I think it's in a trading band right now, and until it gets into, it's at 41.84, until it gets into the 42.50s, and uh, yeah, I, I've always been uh, someone who loves studying the infrastructure because it's the architecture behind the architecture. And I had spoken about this about like two times ago webinar. And we've been looking at certain infrastructure stocks, but I think it's only now that we're going to start seeing the infrastructure being uh, discussed. I don't think Trump's going to have much choice because the Democrats, I suspect, are going to be talking about it. Um, they have to. It's just important for them to get to some economic, uh, um, instead of socialist programs, to start talking about uh, the infrastructure, because that's really important. So um, the answer is yes. Looking at this chart, I think it's just stuck in a range for now between the 42s and the, the 39s. But I think it's one to keep on your list. And if you're really a longer-term uh, purveyor of um, look of, of stocks that have infrastructure connotations and you're prepared that they could pull back while well, nothing's discussed. But when they come on, when the word is given out, these things are going to really roar. So I would put BIP, and I'm going to make a note of it because it's not one that I ever, uh, I, I just don't recall looking at it. Uh, infrastructure. There are circlets, I can remember it. Thank you. Uh, so that's the one that I'm looking at. Uh, daily chart says, you know, let it, if you get a chance, you can buy it closer to 40.10 to 39.50. That's probably your best bet as a shorter term position. If you're looking intermediate term, I'd even say to you, you could buy a call uh, September or something really far out in the money and just have that as your background all the time. Yes, it will pull back uh, 60 or 70 percent at some point, but it has the potential to make you more than a double. Um, because if this works, it's going to go all the way back to the higher 40, uh, 46.88, made in December of 2007. It did drop down to 32. That's a big decline. 
Uh, so I hope that helps you. I have one I'll be, I'll be featuring in my uh, newsletter. I don't know if I'll do it just yet. I'll have to just check it out. Let me just write this down to remind myself. Uh, maybe I'll put it on tomorrow or the next day. Uh, just as, as a watch, let me just check one thing out, if you don't mind. Uh, oh, man, it's already been flying. Uh, it's one that we, we had quite some time ago, and then we got out of it. Now it's screened to the upside. But it's still a very good stock. <laughs> uh, let me just do another question that I had here. Uh, V-shaped pattern. Let's see. As soon as, as, as we seem to only detect a V-shaped pattern late in the pattern, have you been assessing ways to detect it much earlier? Thanks. Yeah, so, you know, I detected the V-shaped pattern early, very early. But for the Dow, S&P and the Qs, it just, and even especially the SMHs, I just did not expect that it would be as vicious. We just, look, let me show you something here. I'm going to go to 2000, and I'm going to just go back. Look at this chart here. If you go to October of, there we are. If you go to November of 2016, remember that was the kickoff with Trump. It, it, it was in, with such speed, it just took right out the left side highs of August of that year. It just, there wasn't even a V-shaped pattern. It just, took, in, in three weeks, it was already at new highs. So that doesn't count. What does count is a move that you could take from January of 2016. You got your H pattern very clear, and then it took off. MACD was strong, stochastic was strong. Um, others have done the same thing. But what we see in this particular pattern, I'm really looking at the 2009, but let's just forget that for the moment because I've already shown you some patterns that were very close. This one never had that right side H pattern. It just took off. So then what happens is that if every single week there's a new high, unless you're in it, and you remember we did buy, we bought stocks all the way at, from the moment we got that bottom. We've been buying. We have not shorted a stock, a stock, in all this time. I'm getting close to that, but we haven't done it yet. So it was me. It wasn't the pattern. The pattern was fantastic. I just could not believe that if you didn't get in on the long side and just close your eyes, every single month it made a new uh, recovery high, right up until uh, the high of around about the 1st of March. So it's not the pattern. The pattern was there. I just, I never expected that after the kind of move that we had, that we would have this. Let me show you one, one more that's even better. Let me just go to the QQQ because that didn't uh, let up at all. Look. That has had peaks of one week, and it's in leg C at this particular moment. It's in leg C at 186.91. Now it's only 40, uh, 60, cents, uh, 60 cents away from an all-time high. Uh, you know, that's, so it's my fault. I, 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 I'm not, I cannot make any excuse about the Chapman Wave. It wasn't the Chapman Wave's fault. It was my reading and the history that a baggage that I took. If I didn't have the baggage, if I was just a novice and I had learned this, I would have said, wow, this is it. We're, we're, we're just going along and we're not going to put any stop in. We're in and we're not getting out until we hit the old eye. Um, if that happens, really, it rare, it's so rare to do that. Maya culpa, that's all I can say. So that's a pattern. Now it's going to be difficult on the retracement to see how do we get in for the next big move to the upside because it's, I think it's going to become either just too difficult because there's no pullback or it's going to be so sudden and so steep, bad news just comes prol proliferating like when you see uh, like those guys on their little ship, I mean the little boats, the two little flotillas um, out there, was it in Alaska? And this big, big portion of ice just broke off and created the tsunami, and the next thing they were running like crazy along the ice when they got to the uh, the, the little uh, ice, the rocks of ice that had run across them to get away from the tsunami. Um, I think they did. That's why I can tell the story in a joke. Otherwise, it would have been a lot more serious. But yeah, and that's the tsunami. This is a tsunami to the upside. So uh, 
And look at the weekly chart, just the MACD, even now, the histogram is for the first time over the last two weeks shown that the distance between the rising nine period differential in the weekly chart and the red slow moving average is just starting to decrease. And the MACD is, is not yet turned down, has not yet turned down, and the stochastic's at 96%. Mea culpa, that's all I can say. Thank goodness we have, we've had a lot of other stocks and uh, we are hold, we're holding long positions. We've had some really nice trades. So uh, there's no, that's all I can say. And I hope I don't miss it ever again. Um, I get my mind was in the way, not the chart. All right, so the, the Qs are up 70 cents. The Dow's up 51. S&P's lagging is up 3.36. I think we're getting real close to some kind of a pullback. I'll talk about that when we get back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. So what I want you to do, look, there's this. Uh, so it did go to a D. The two-minute chart went to a D at 29.14. It's made the H that goes to lowercase m pattern. That's what I was drawing in earlier on. So I uh, just sideways, I think. Let me just show you something. There. This is a, just a little concerning me in, in the short term. Let me show you. So if you look at the my Chapman Wave automated uh, projections, that's the uh, automated resistance and support levels, look what we've got. For the Dow, you've got 26,646, or right there, 26,913 is next. It's just gone above the three 
in the 26,290s has gone above three of them. That's a good sign. So 26,646, there's a little bit more room to the upside. Then you've got to be careful. 26,623, three in the weekly chart, and then up in the 27,100s. I got a feeling that has to just wait a little bit. And look, the 120 minute chart, 26,591, uh, and a lot in the 10 minute chart. So I'm suspecting that. We, we, not that you can't go a little higher, but I think it's starting to get harder. Look at the um, S&P. Oh, let me just go to the SPY for the moment. The SPY shows you 291.02. It shows you two uh, in the weekly, 291 to 293s in the daily. So it's got a little bit of way to go. It's at 290.35. Uh, we've also looked, we're looking at 290.68 in the 10 minute, 290.61 in the 120, then 291. So look, I don't... Try to find the light blue support levels just in the 10-minute chart. They aren't. So it says upside, that's the resistance that we're going to be looking at. When it hits it, will we start to find that there are support levels to be concerned about? The Q is right there. Broke in the weekly chart, broke the 180, uh, 183s, 185s. Now you've got a bunch in the daily at between 187 and 188. And in the uh, 186.70, is in the 120 minute chart. What's today's high? Today is 186. What is that? Let me just check it out. Uh, 186.91. So you can see that we are close to some kind of resistance levels on the automated basis. IWM, IWM is trading at 157.55. And just above, you've got 158.62, 158.76, and 157.60 are resistance levels in the daily. Uh, the 120 minute chart, 158.35, and way up at 173 in the monthly charts. Uh, so, and 157.60 right in this area at this moment in the 10 minute chart. And supports, we've only got 156 as a support, 156.07 to 156.82. Let's go to the, uh, let's look at gold. Gold at this particular point is down, was down 13, what's it down now? It's down 14. So that says there's a lot of support in the 10 minute chart in the 1275s. We've pierced the 1285 weekly chart support. The daily chart next one is at 1263. And the, right now we're at the one at the 1274.64 uh, 120 minute chart support. This is going to be an important moment for for uh, gold. If you look at the dollar upside, resistance is 97.05, 97.10 on the 10 minute chart. There's a lot of support at 96.50s in the daily. 97.36 up there, way up 36, 97.45 and 97.90. Course, and the 97s offers a lot of resistance in the daily. Look at the weekly, all the 97s then. That's why 97.71 was a double top. And look at the 120. Oh, the monthly chart is huge. And the daily chart, uh, the 120 has 97.03. And we're at 97.02 right now. So if the dollar is able to break all of that resistance and go to the 99s over the next month, that's going to break important resistance. Uh, it's going to be hard to do, but I'm just saying that's what I'd be looking for. And the support in the 96s is really important in all the different uh, time frames. Okay. Now, a question I had was the IYT pulling back today because uh, JB Hunt had lousy uh, transportation, had lousy uh, numbers, but it's only down 26 at 194.34. We've been long since the 185 area. And I like this. I, I think it's got 196 to 199, very strong resistance in the daily, huge in the 194.90s in the 10-minute chart, 196 in the 120-minute chart, but very few support levels. The support level is at one, um, 193.31 on the 10-minute chart, and then there's nothing. So if it breaks down, there's no support until it gets to 178. <laughs> That, that's a far, that's a long way down. But so far, it looks like it wants to test a little longer, just to maybe one more test of the upside. But all of these are suggesting to me that the upside resistance levels that we are looking at, unless there's going to be 
a very strong, unless there's a, some kind of news tomorrow that just really makes the dollar power through into the 98s. That's going to be really important. Um, and I, I don't know what the story could be. So that would only mean that if gold actually really tanks again tomorrow, then that should help the dollar. The dollar should break away. EUR, USD, it's a little more difficult to see on this particular chart right now. But we've got 1.13, we're at 1.1284. Up in the 1.13s is a lot of resistance, and down the 1.13, so 1.14, yeah. And and 1.13 is support. A lot of 1.13, 1, 1.12, 1.11 in the weekly chart and in the monthly chart, 1.11. But uh, it's now it's pointing because there's so much support that it's pointing to some kind of support being attempted rather than resistance level. So this could be very important here. All right, I want you to do that just to show you um, moving around. Let's go to Dan Alfreda, Georgia. Dan, how are you? I'm doing well, Basil. Thank you. Good. I, a question for you. I was looking at the at the IWM and wondering if you're on the daily. I can can't figure if it's uh, getting into a new leg A or E. Um, it's E. So this is a new, oh, e. oh, your question is, it made the D, would this be a new leg A? If you have any questions, just put an alternate count, E to A. Um, that would be legitimate here, but everything I like to be sequential until there are really good signs to say, you know, the last low could have been a low of importance, so maybe I need an alternate count after D. This is not an alternate count right now. I've got it as an E, and I think I'd stay with it as an E, and it's trading at point, up 42 cents at 157.59. Uh, there's a, there are a couple of patterns here that are really important. If, you, if I'm going to blow up my uh, weekly chart so that you can see it in greater detail, just so that I can explain to you uh, what I'd be looking at as resistance levels. There's a trend line from the August high of 173.39 in the uh, Russell 2000 ETF. And it comes down to the high that was made on the rebound from the low of December to the March, uh, first week of March high. I think it's the first of March, 159.50. Then it pulled back quite sharply, created an uptrend line. And now it's making this cup formation, but it's just outside what I call the Chapman Wave inside track. Have you got time uh, to hold on? Because I've got something that I, I'd like to talk about. Sure, I'm Okay, great. We've got Dan and Alfreda, Georgia. We're looking at IWM. Uh, it's going to be important that Dow's only have... If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the gold report currently 
currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Folks, we're back, and the Dow's up 37. I just wanted to show something because we're on with Dan and Alfredo, Georgia, and we're looking at the IWM. In the weekly and the daily, it's a pattern that I talk about very often. So there's a lowercase h pattern, but if you flip it over, it becomes a kind of a reverse Y. That reverse Y means you've gone up, and then you've made a cup formation, and you're retesting the left side high. What happens at that point is going to be very important. So what does that mean? Look at this chart of the daily. You see this move to the upside, goes to 159.50, pull peak D, and then it pulls back to the 148 level, 25th of March. Now it's making its way. Now I've got a Chapman wave inside wedge. I've got the uh, the plumb line that I always talk about. He has your plumb line right there. That's on the low of the 25th of March at 148.41. And look what it did. It took X number of bars to come down. And now it's taking about the same number of bars to get to this level. And I'm suspecting there's, there might be just enough strength to try to test another once or twice the 159 area uh, of this green dash Chapman wave inside wedge target line. And that won't happen if, and I always like to have the opinion that there's perhaps a cup formation and there should be a fighting arch formation. And that would say, that if that's going to fail, we should fail almost at the highs, and that should create a new arch formation. So I've drawn them in. I'm not sure, Dan, if you can see this if you're watching it live, but I'm you'll not. be able to. You are able. Uh, no, sir. Okay, so uh, then perhaps in the in, in the archive you'll have a chance. But the reason why I want you to bring it up is that we've got the same thing now in the cup formation of the uh, IWM weekly chart, and that's saying that this is the breakout here of the downtrend line is important because it's suggesting with the MACD strong and the stochastic still at 86%, there's a chance that we could get to the 159s as a point and a half higher, and that's going to be very important. Does it double top and then take a breather, or does it just smash right through in the cup formation? The pattern I'm looking at right now says there should be some kind of resistance. So I should actually get to you and say, but what exactly were you looking at and wanting to do? Eh, I, I am short, but I have a, a stop at about 160, um, 161. And I, I guess my more interesting, I was more interested in what your thoughts were because the S&P, Dow, and NASDAQ are all pretty much at highs. Correct. Yeah, this is still quite a Way bit down. down. Way down. 173 was the high in August. It's trading at 157 right now. I think that the Dow and the uh, uh, the Dow and the transports, Dow transports, and the IWM are going to play catch up. My thinking here is getting closer and closer to th to, to to believing that there's first going to be a pullback so that they can build the energy to do that, which puts you in the right camp 
but it does say that are you short which vehicle are you you you, you have the three times short you just yeah. short you do have the three see that makes it completely different so that's your you you have the tza um and it's trading at nine dollars and, and a penny that means that you would have to allow it to, uh, to go if you could prepare to go to 160 that means that the TZA will take out the low of the 12th, which is at 891. So that's 10 cents. You know, wow. I Oh, I know what I would do. So this is this is just my thinking because I have to just be very honest with you. If the IWM, I'm thinking that it could pull back in this area, but it could just make a slightly higher high uh, from where it was just three days ago. That still puts it under or close to the uh, to the most important left side high of 157 of so 159.50. I I would probably do this. You're in the position. I would let the day play out. It looks to me like the at this point it's funny because suddenly the IWM is one of the stronger of the indices. It's up 0.28%. I'm sorry to tell you this. You know that, right? Um, <laughs> But at the same time, it keeps rotating. And when it pulls back, it does have a pretty sharp pullback. So I'm going to, this is what I would do. If you've got the three times long, I would divide it into three. I would say that if by the end of the day, the IWM actually closes closer to the, to the high of the day, uh, which is 157.90, I'd probably lighten up one position. You know, you could, if this starts to tank, you're going to be able to get in. It, it, you won't get in the best level but you might be able to get in where you're getting out now in other words the best level might be that it actually goes high and then the tza is down in that uh, 890 area so that would be the best level but it doesn't matter you want to get the direction and right now i don't have anything telling me that the di there's a directional change in the daily and definitely i don't have it in the weekly so it's I don't want to put it into the guesswork char uh, characteristic, but I'm going to say to you, I, I would handle the trade so that it, I don't want it overnight. You can't get you can't get out overnight, correct? Correct. Yeah. So that's why the reason why I don't think I want the overnight risk. I'd rather say I'm missing opportunity because it's now going down. I can I, now I can pile into the downside. Then to say, oh my God! Oh, by tomorrow morning at 9:30, I just hope that something horrible happens, so that the market goes down. I just—that's not the way we want to do it. So I'm just saying to you, risk reward. If it get, closes at the highish of the day, um, I probably would myself. I would probably say I'm getting out of two thirds. Keep a third, just in case. I might even say, you know what? I'd much rather be buying it. When I've got confidence that look, even the 120 minute chart had made a what did I do? I, I, it made a peak FOE the other day, uh, yesterday. Yeah, it made a peak E, and yet it's not pulling back very sharply. It's holding very nicely. Look, two nice green candles for the 120 minute chart. Stochastics is trying to turn up. Magdi's not looking too bad. I'm, I'm saying to you, I prefer to miss opportunity to, to have you overnight. Well, you know, I, I, yesterday I had a Chapman Wave trend gauge reading which said that there should be a 9 to 11 point e-mini rally at some point either overnight or today within two days and we had it overnight going into this morning. Um, I don't have any reading. I just checked it. I don't have any reading for tomorrow. I'm just saying to you that if this closes near the high and there's no bad news at all tomorrow, this could, this could actually gap up and I just... I'm only thinking of the risk reward. Now, I don't want to change your thinking. If you're prepared to say that that's what you were looking at in the IWM of the 160 area, um, that's fine. I mean, you have a plan. I don't want to change your plan. I'm just saying I've got a Chapman Wave inside wedge target line, which is at 158.79. If it goes above that, my next level is 159.50. So that's already telling me that there's a real good chance that it could push higher by tomorrow. So I'm just saying, if you want my opinion, I'm just saying be a little careful. You can always get back in. And not only that, if you miss the turn down by even two points, but it is saying that it's 
The magnet's starting to turn down. Stochastic is at 93%. That's very good. So I'm just saying to you, I'd be very careful. I hope it helps you, but I would be very careful. Thank you. Okay. Let me know how it goes this speaking in a couple of days. Thank you for calling. Um, that's Dan, and we'll be back. Dow's at 45. I'll be back. Right I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge, heard here at TFNN.com. Uh, hi, folks. We're back. And, yeah, a couple of things that I just wanted to talk about is that, yeah, just to, uh, for, for Dan, um, I'm not sure if you're still listening. I, if you were in a winning position, I probably wouldn't have wanted to make any change. I would have just said to you, congratulations, good trade. The reason why I wanted to go through my thinking here was not that within uh, it's, it's five minutes to one and say by five minutes to two, suddenly the market's pulling back sharply and the IWM is tanking and you say, oh, my God, it got. No, it was just to say that if it closes towards the high of the day, there could be a gap up tomorrow. And that's really I don't see the reason to have that kind of risk. Under those conditions, if we start to pull back and the IWM, which is up 43, starts to go up up, up 33, then only up 0.29, and then up 10, and by the end of the day, you're looking at something much lower than it is right now, 157.62, you're absolutely in the right position, and that, that's very different. That, so that, that was my thinking. I just want to clarify that, because sometimes what you're saying 
and um, what's being heard. You know, I just may want to make sure that we, we're on the same length. And the other thing is, yes, I, um, as far as sectors are concerned, there were two sectors that we were shorting, but that's different to the stocks. I was saying that the, I couldn't, even though I saw individual stocks that might have been looking weak, we didn't take any stocks. I was rather having the generic sector that we would short because that seemed to me a more secure way of doing it than at this particular stage in the market cycle of an individual stock. But I am looking and I'm saying to myself, well, look at Starbucks. Starbucks is had a spectacular, look at this monthly move in since July of 2018, somewhere in the 47s. It's gone straight up to the almost the 77 area. And the monthly chart, this is still only a leg B. Not the way I can count it. I've been through this so many times. The weekly chart is in um, a leg D, maybe a peak D this week. We don't know. NACD is good. Stochastic is very good at 97%. And, uh, but it is a D. And a D, other things can happen. So you look at the daily chart, and the daily chart says, hey, is this an F or a C? It looks more like it could be an F. It could look like uh, it's bumping into resistance. All-time highs, what are you doing? You're messing around looking at the short side. But I think it's Starbucks and some of these other stocks could be tells over the next few days about the bigger picture, shorter term.